Welcome to the PV Designer video training series by Solmetric. This series consists of three video segments designed to introduce the Solar Photovoltaic System Designer to the benefits of the PV Designer software. We'll launch the Sunai software, choose a data set to work with, and then launch the PV Designer software from the session menu. What we see now is the PV Designer session guide. This step-by-step -step guide appears when a dataset has no previous designs associated with it. We'll enter our system data screen by screen, advancing with the next button, and going back a step with the previous button. Alternatively, the menu tree on the left can also be used. After the design guide has been completed, edits can still be made to all the data in manual mode. We'll start by selecting the closest weather data. This is a TMY3 weather station located 8 miles from where the Sunai data was taken. Next, we'll enter the minimum and maximum temperatures for this location. We'll name this design, and then we'll move on to the layout plane section. Here, we can input the slope and orientation of the roof. Next, we input the roof dimensions. We can also define a setback distance from the roof edge where modules are not allowed to be placed due to code restrictions or for roof access. Here we can choose from a drop down list of common modules or we can create a custom module by inputting manufacturer specifications. For now we'll choose a common PV module from the database. Next, we can change the orientation and the spacing of the modules. Then, we input the array size. We can fill the available roof plane with modules, select the total number of modules to be used, or limit our array by defining the maximum power. We'll choose a maximum power array of 6 kilowatts. We can then arrange the modules on the roof plane by selecting the number of rows and the alignment, both horizontally and vertically. Next, we choose the inverter. Again, we have a choice of either standard inverters from the drop-down menu or creating a custom inverter using manufacturer specifications. We'll choose a common inverter from the database. Note that multiple inverters can be used in each design. For now, we'll click Finish to exit the Auto Layout mode and enter Manual mode, where we see display summaries of all the data that we have entered. Notice that in the Layout view we have a string sizing error. The 26 modules have been placed into three strings of unequal length, and the third string is therefore not connected to the inverter. Let's change to two strings of 13 modules each using the Auto String tool. Now we have two strings that use all 26 modules, but notice that we now have a yellow caution triangle, signaling a configuration error. We can roll over the triangle to get more information, or simply open up the new gas gauge feature by selecting the inverter and clicking on the Inverter Limit Checks button. Now we can easily see that 13 modules per string exceeds the voltage limitation of our chosen inverter. Let's reconfigure our inverter for three strings of eight modules each. Now we are within the inverter limits, but there are two leftover modules that we need to remove from the roof. Simply select the modules by dragging the cursor over them and click the Delete Module button. Alternatively, for a neater array, we can re-enter the Auto Layout mode and now select an array size of 24 modules. Then we can auto string the modules into three strings of eight modules each. Now we can clearly see that we have three strings connected to our inverter and no configuration errors. We can also adjust the D-rate factors for various components by clicking on the D-rate button on the Design tab. These values are similar to those used by the PV Watts online calculator. This brings to a close Part 2 of this series. In Part 3 of this series, we'll incorporate shade data and optimize our design. Thanks for watching and learning about the Soulmetric PV Designer software.